Hello and welcome to the Riot Inverse Report. It has been a few weeks since D23 and we are now over halfway through production on Season 1. This video will be a roundup of all the updates and little tidbits we got since my D23 video. First, more from D23. The cast later shared photos of them together at the event on their Instagrams. Leah for one said on her post that it was a dream come true. And I can only imagine. Additionally, we got new official promo images, which look amazing if you want my opinion. The official Percy Jackson series accounts also got a new look, and I'm happy that they are sticking with this logo and have officially dropped this one they had for a few months. Rick Riordan also made a blog post about the event, sharing how great it was for him to see the excitement from others about Percy Jackson while there. He said, the older teen and adult stars gave our trio lots of kudos, and everyone was so genuinely excited to see Percy Jackson come to life as a TV show. I was also very moved to hear so many of the young stars on other shows come up to me and thank me for being part of their childhood. What an honor, and to see what successful, grounded, and genuinely nice people they have grown up to be. He continued to talk about the incredible reactions to the Percy Jackson trailer we got, and he added, As I have said before, the really exciting thing is that this trailer is just the tiniest glimpse. Wait until you see what else we got cooking. There's still so much more for us to see, but if this trailer is any indication, then I'm sure it's going to be just as amazing. Speaking of the teaser trailer, which has since reached over 5 million views on the official Twitter account and over 4 million views on YouTube, Rick gave us an answer about these symbols on the cabins. If you'll remember from my video about D23, I mentioned how I wasn't sure about what these were and even thought one of them was the number six, which I now know it isn't. Rick tells us, there is a story behind these. You are right, they are not Greek. They are not any known human language. That is intentional. You will discover what those are about later on. This is such a cool expansion to the world of the story. He also touched on the new Camp Half-Blood t-shirt designs in the trailer, and he says that Disney is already working on making them into official merch. I, for one, can't wait to get one, and I'm also really curious as to what the other merch will be. I think pens that look like Riptide and Camp Half-Blood beaded necklaces would be super cool to have. This blog post also clarified which episodes each director will be overseeing. We already knew James Bobin had the first two episodes, and that Anders Engstrom would be in charge of episode three, but now we also know he will handle episode four, while episodes five and six are under the direction of our other director, Jet Wilkinson. So basically, two episodes per director. He adds about Engstrom and Wilkinson, both are pros who bring so much skill, artistry, and enthusiasm to the process. It's just an honor to watch them work with our cast. Each day, I have to pinch myself, as it becomes clearer and clearer that this is really happening. After all the years of hard work and hand-wringing, we are actually bringing this show to life in the best possible way. However, that leaves the final two episodes. I wonder who will direct. If there is still another director they need to get, or if it will go to one of the other directors we already have. Sometimes shows start and end a season with the same director, so it's possible James Bobin will be back for those. Or they might already have a fourth director and are keeping them a secret until later. Whoever it is will be in charge of the largest scale moments of the season, I imagine, as it will probably involve the underworld, all big three gods, Olympus, the pit to Tartarus, the fight with Ares, and the big twist at the end. So it's definitely a big responsibility. Also about the trailer, Becky Riordan addressed a question regarding the tone of the show in a Twitter thread saying, good question for today. Is the TV show going to be very dramatic and dark like we see in the trailer, or will it be more lighter with the dry humor we see in the books? Simple answer is both. Complicated answer, see thread. Being middle grade books, Rick's novels are easy to read and why some six-year-olds dive into them. Hi Daphne. But another reason they are so easy to read is because Rick wanted kids that found reading boring and difficult to be able to read his children's books. Our kids. 
Our show is being designed for a family audience and why Disney is the perfect home for it. The darker, more mature side of Rick's books will be pushed forward while also keeping the fun and joy that makes his books appealing. She added, Walker describes the tone perfectly. Percy is funny. He's witty. He's very sarcastic. He's very hot-headed. In other words, we allow Percy to be Percy in our show. Arian does Grover's humor perfectly and also fear and sadness. He is a true blue protector, on and off the stage. And a final tidbit, one of the things Leah joyfully told us after she was cast is that she inherited her brother's room filled with Rick's books when he went off to college. I am going to be that girl from my brother's books. She is indeed that girl with all the fury and compassion we expect. In the days after D23, some more interviews with the cast were posted, and I want to highlight this one where the cast were asked what they were most excited about bringing to life on the screen. Definitely, it was the uh, the Ares fight. That was probably the coolest fight in like the whole series. And when I got casted for this, the first thing I thought is the Ares fight. I'm so excited to do it. I, I mean, I can't speak for Leah, but I think we were both huge fans of the book before it, before I. Me personally, I didn't even know they were making a show. Uh, my friend had to send me the open call, but I was already a huge fan of it. I'm a really big fan of it. I love the whole series, and I think it's amazing the way how Mr. Rick wrote it, of course. He gave me like a lot of good pointers on things and stuff. Like, in this part, you know, like I think you should actually add something to it. Like, you know, and sometimes he'll be like, you know, like, be yourself in this one. Let's see, like, what happens and things. Because really, in this, like, I was at first, I was Leah, and now, like, wherever I go, I'm like, I'm not even Leah anymore. I'm just Annabeth. Because I really connected to the character so much now. It's like, who's Leah? Now, some filming updates. I didn't cover it in my last news video because I just wanted to focus on D23. But just a few days before the event, we got some photos from on location filming at Holland Park in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. There were some ambulances on set that said St. Louis on them, so more filming for the St. Louis arch scenes. And moving on to the beginning of October, they were filming in Surrey again, but at an abandoned business park on 104th Avenue. I'm not quite sure what they might have been filming here just based on the look of it, so I'm definitely curious as to what it was. Finally, before the end of the video, Leah celebrated her 13th birthday last week on the 25th of September. She posted this beautiful picture of herself, and many in the cast also sent her happy birthday wishes on social media. The next day, we found out that they celebrated on set as well with a birthday cake and gifting her with some blue Nike shoes. Look how happy our Annabeth is. And that is all for this video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below your thoughts on everything new. And since we're still waiting on the casting announcements for some of the gods, if you've made it this far, comment your predictions or fan casts for who will play the big three and Aries. I don't have any ideas myself, so I'm really curious to know what everyone else is thinking. With that being said, this has been the Riot Inverse Report. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you with the next wave of news. Bye!